Hi everybody, Shadow Weather Guy. Just thought I'd make another quick video here on what exactly brings Western Washington its biggest windstorms. And I'd like to go over the bomb cyclone that you've probably heard about in the Seattle Times uh, the last couple days. Kind of go ahead and compare uh, the event tomorrow and early next week compared to what really brings Western Washington its big windstorms. So as you can see here, there's good there's good model agreement on this storm forming tomorrow. It's a very deep low, very unusual to have this strong of a low this far south, a beam with Western Washington. And you've heard the term bomb cyclone being thrown around. That means the storm is going to drop about 24 or more millibars in a 24 hour period. That's all it means. This is gonna bring some rain for Western Washington, some heavy rain for Northern California, and maybe some waves for the coast. But other than that, it's not gonna be a big wind maker. Let's go ahead and look at what's coming our way for Sunday. According to the European model, an even deeper low is supposed to form off the coastline. You can see this one's a little bit closer. This one is also gonna go through cyclogenesis and reach that bomb cyclone criteria. So that's just, you know, it is a meteorological term, but that's all that it means. It's just basically the rate of deepening that it undergoes. So you can see these gradients, they're, they're getting towards the coastlines here. You know, a pretty good gradient sets up over Southern Oregon there. Put this into motion and you can see those gradients getting closer to Western Washington, especially the coastline. You can see this just monster low going just west of the northern tip of Vancouver Island. It does put some decent gradient across western Washington. But again, we have poor model agreement at this time. The GFS and the European do not agree on the path of this storm. So we're still waiting for that to play itself out. And let's go ahead and look at what actually does cause big windstorms for western Washington. As you can see here, this is 2019, January 5th and 6th. This low it is quite weak compared to what is coming off our coastline the next few days. 984 low, kind of moving up the Oregon coast here. But the whole key to all this is you want a tight gradient if you want big winds. So you can see on the Oregon coast they're getting a good shot of wind. And you can see these gradients, they're coming right up the sound, a very favorable track for high wind over the Puget Sound area. And that's exactly what it brought. It brought 60 mile per hour gusts there for SeaTac the first 60 mile per hour gust since 2006. So almost a, well, just over a 12 year gap there. And we have not had a 60 mile per hour gust since. Now let's go to 2006 and the Hanukkah Eve storm and check out this monster storm. So you can see it's not near as deep, not as powerful as what's coming for the next few days off of our coastline, but that doesn't matter much. You can see this tightly packed gradient in the bent back occlusion of the storm as it approaches the Washington, Oregon coastline. And as it gets closer to the Puget Sound, this is basically the perfect track for bringing big winds to the Puget Sound. You can see these tightly packed isobars from Portland all the way up north of Seattle. And it brought a 69 mile per hour gust through the SeaTac area, the strongest wind ever recorded. You see that 980 low it doesn't sound like much when you're taught when you're comparing that to a 950 but again it's all about the placement it's all about that gradient and let's go ahead and check out just what are the differences between the euro the european and the gfs model coming up here this is the gfs model you look at um sunday monday tuesday they're just there's nothing there's no big wins in the GFS's forecast. And this is because the GFS spins up this low and never brings it over Western Washington. We never get a strong gradient from the storm. And if we look at the European, here's where you see the disagreement. You can see that there are some pretty good peak winds in here. There's about 22 of the 50 have 47 miles per hour or more for SeaTac. That's a strong gale. Um, there's a few members in here that go 60 plus, and that's a very uh, destructive windstorm for Seattle. But again, we're still four days out from this event. We need to, I like to get, you know, model agreement between the GFS and the European model before I start getting hyped up about these storms. We're still in fantasy land now. And that's where we're at. Uh, this, what, we're 2.30 here on Wednesday afternoon. So I expect this to come into agreement within the next probably 24 hours, I would say. Um, the Canadian model kind of leaned a little bit towards the GFS this morning, so I'm kind of leery of what the European is showing here. I'd like to see more agreement before I start getting on board with anything. So yeah, I just wanted to do this quick video and kind of clear up what we're looking at. 
as far as a bomb cyclone and what it means compared to what causes the big windstorms in Western Washington. If you guys like these videos, make click make sure to click like and subscribe and I'll keep trying to make these videos. Stay tuned on Twitter. I'll be updating daily on the windstorm potential for next week. See you guys later.